Okay, so why do this? Why language splaying? It's not because I'm a grammar Nazi. It's not because I like to go around picking out other people's mistakes. First of all, there's you. A lot of my students feel intimidated by basic communication tasks because they're afraid they're going to make a mistake that will embarrass them or get them in trouble. That's where I come in. I am a language geek and I love demystifying and simplifying English for other people. There's actually a lot you can get away with. There's also a lot I wish people would quit getting away with. And that brings me to my second point, which is the consequences of the abuse and disuse of the language. Now, the disuse comes from our deteriorating education system in which we no longer write sentences, paragraphs, and essays in grades one through 12. That's why I get students whose business success has outstripped their formal knowledge of the language, and they feel unequal to tasks like composing a memo or, God forbid, a sternly worded letter or a white paper. Now, it's bad enough when people hesitate to express themselves, but on the flip side of this, it gets downright sinister. There are people who deliberately abuse language in order to confuse you or to hide their true meaning. And when you encounter these airy, somehow don't fit together expressions, the effect it has is to make you doubt yourself. Who am I who cannot compose a simple sentence to question the cleverness and wisdom of someone who is so smart that I can't understand a word they say? It's ironic, but true. This is how it works. I just want to know how you can say you're going to put a lot of coal miners out of, out of jobs and then come in here and tell us how you're going to be our friend. What I said was totally out of context from what I meant. Simple, succinct, gobbledygook. Are you shocked that politicians are among the worst offenders? No, 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 no. I'm not taking sides. They all do it. Alternative facts. Yeah, that's a good one. My point is that people who mislead you by telling outright provable lies are less dangerous than people who mislead you by deliberately abusing words. My favorite writer on this topic is George Orwell. He wrote an essay called Politics and the English Language, which is probably out on the internet somewhere. I urge you to read it. You've probably already read 1984, and you may recall the design principles of Newspeak. The idea was to gut the language of all nuance and meaning, to take away vocabulary so that some poor minion of this empire would never ever be able to even conceive of, much less craft, some magnificent, rich declaration of independence. No, the most they could articulate, even in their own minds, would be, Big Brother is ungood. And this brings to mind a particularly annoying abuse I've been hearing a lot of nowadays. Yeah, I gotta state my truth, like... My truth, your truth, his truth, her truth, their truth. How many truths are there? The. Not a, uh, not his or hers or yours or mine or theirs. My experience, my findings, my opinion, accurate, effective terms that are being subjected to disuse. The thing is, it's like anything. If you abuse and neglect that word, truth, it's not gonna be there for you when you need it. I mean, there you'll be with the, the bloody body in your arm saying, someone, I want the truth. And they'll say, which truth you want? We got 16, 17 truths here for you. It comes to mind because the government of Oceania also abused that word, truth. The most horrific institution in 1984 was the Ministry of Truth. They didn't administer truth there. They administered torture and mind control. And this is to let you know, every time you abuse the language, every time you add confusion and subtract meaning, you're adding a couple of bricks to that Ministry of Truth. And when that Ministry of Truth gets big enough, we're all going in. And we're not getting out until we love Big Brother.